Hello and welcome back to the Southern Bible Thumper channel. My name is Cam and today we will be reading Genesis chapter 37. I'm recording multiple chapters in a day so for this video, that's what I'm going to start saying, for this video we will be reading Genesis chapter 37. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, I feel like I had a little booger. Sorry. And when his brethren saw that his father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams, and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren, and his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to this earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren, tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren, and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him, and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there he passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Jacob into Egypt, and Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, and he returned unto his brethren, and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat, and killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they bought it to their father, and said, This have we found. Now, no, now, whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his loins, and 
<laughs> and mourned his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to com comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, and captain of the guard. Summarizing chapter 37, Joseph, who is Jacob's son by Rachel, is in Canaan with, Jose, with Jacob, and this is not their hometown. Canaan is not their hometown. Verse 2, Joseph's evil report was him tattling on his brothers and his cousins. So he's the favorite, and he tells on his brothers. Jacob loved Joseph more than all of his brothers and made him a coat of many colors. Joseph's brothers hated him because of how Jacob loved him, and they could not speak a kind word to him. Jo Joseph told his brothers about a dream he had, that they were gathering bundles of grain. Joseph's bundle stood up, and the brothers' grain, their sheets or their bundles of grain, bowed to his bundle, and his bundle was standing up. So this made his brothers hate him even more. So he's the favorite. He's the tattletale. His father made him a beautiful coat. And now he has this dream where he has, you know, his grains, his bundle of grains are standing up and everybody else's bundles of grains are bowing to him. They respond to him in verse 8. Do you intend to rule over us? Are you actually going to rule over us? And they hated him for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9. Joseph told his family that the sun, moon, and stars were bowing to him in a second dream. His father, Jacob, slash Israel, rebuked him, or scolded him, and asked if his mother and his relatives should bow to him. Verse 11. His brothers grew even more jealous of the favorite tattletale. But Jacob remembered this dream. Verse 13. Joseph's brothers went to feed flock, and Jacob sent him to his brothers to find out how things were. A man saw Joseph wandering in the fields and asked him what he's looking for. Verse 16. He wanted to know where his brothers were. Joseph. He asked the man where they were feeding their flocks, and the man told him that he heard they were planning to go to this different city, Dothan. And jo Joseph went there and found them. In verse 18, as soon as the brothers saw him, they plotted against him to kill him. In verse 19, as he approached his brothers, they started taunting him. Oh, look, here comes the dreamer. They plotted that they would kill him and say that a beast did it. Verse 21, Reuben, their oldest brother, convinced the brothers not to kill Joseph, but to throw him in a pit because he planned to rescue Joseph and take him back home. In verse 24, the brothers took his coat, threw him in a pit, and sat down to eat. The pit also had no water. Verse 25, a group of Ishmaelites with lots of goods were on their way to Egypt. Judah had the idea to sell Joseph to them for 20 pieces of silver. Verse 30, Reuben came to the pit to find Joseph, who's now gone. Verse 31, Judah and the brothers killed a goat, dipped Joseph's coat in it, and told their father Jacob that that's all they found. In verse 33, Jacob, his father, mourned many days and refused to accept any comfort for his family from his family. And in verse 36, Joseph was sold to Potiphar, who was Pharaoh's captain. I hate when these little pieces of paper are like that. That bothers me a lot. Sometimes I need to rip them out if I've made too many mistakes on one. So some highlights for chapter 37. In verse 2, Joseph told on his brothers when they did bad things. Keeping in mind, he's the second youngest child. Benjamin is the baby. And right now in this story, he's 17 years old. In verse 3, Joseph was loved more than his other brothers. 
in chapter 29, verse 3, Jacob loved Rachel, his mother, more than he loved Leah. And the Bible never mentions that Jacob loved the handmaidens, Zilpah and Bilhah. Favoritism from being a loved wife extended into the offspring in this story. So how that man felt about the woman that he married, how he, the woman that he loved, he also loved the children that came from her in this story. Jacob's favoritism inspires jealousy. In chapter 37, verse 4, his brothers hated him after they saw that Joseph was loved more and they couldn't say anything nice about him. This was, that feeling of discomfort was legitimate from his brothers. Jacob didn't feel the same way about his brother's mothers. And then he didn't feel the same way about the children that came from them. And he showed all this love to the children that came from Rachel. And Rachel died, giving birth to her second child. These other women gave birth to two or more children, and they, they're still around. And they still didn't get that love from Jacob, because Jacob, he never felt that way about them. Jealousy motivated the brothers to plot on Jacob, to murder him, to sell him into slavery, and to lie. So they plotted on him, plotted to act against him, and to tell their father a lie about him. Jacob was a child, most likely naive, because he tattled on his brothers, told them his dreams, insinuating his status over his brothers in verse 6 through 7 and verse 9 through 10, and then he already has this status as his father's favorite, and he felt safe enough to travel alone to find his group of brothers in verse 14 through 18. So he has this air of naivety, because for them to not know, for him to never know that his brothers hated him to that extent, he has to be naive. Also, he's 17. Verse 18. Jealousy inspired his brothers to plan to act against him as soon as they saw Joseph. Joseph didn't do anything to them. They just saw him in verse 18. As soon as they saw him, they began to plot. So Joseph didn't even do anything today. He didn't tattle on them. He didn't tell them another dream. They hated him from before and let that marinate in their hearts. Verse 22, Reuben was outnumbered by his brothers. He does not directly defy them because he's outnumbered, but he suggests another option that doesn't harm Joseph and that can appease the majority. All of his brothers weren't against him but there weren't enough good brothers to thwart this plan overtly. So sometimes there are environments where one person is targeted by a group of people. And there might be one in the group that doesn't hate the, the target, but if you're outnumbered and you see something wrong, kind of like King Abimelech, there's nothing you can do with a group of jealous people. And jealous people tend to plot together and hang around each other. Even if they don't like each other that much, they'll just hang out with each other just to go against that one target. Verse 23, jealousy motivated Joseph's brothers to strip his coat, changing his appearance. Their jealousy motivated his brothers to change his location by putting him in a pit and limit his mobility as much as they could. Ripping off his clothes, throwing, throwing him into a pit, selling him into slavery. Change his appearance, change his location, limit his mobility. When people have jealousy in their heart, in, in this situation, the brothers had that kind of jealousy in their heart. It motivates them to act. Change, limit their mobility, change their location. Mess them up because they feel jealous. Verse 36, Joseph was sold to a powerful Egyptian leader. That is the end of chapter 37, and I will return to read chapter 38. Thank you for watching.
especially you, White Raptor.